Hello, today I want to talk to you just a little bit about how we talk about time. Now this is going to be a review for, for some of you, and that's okay, um, but for some of you, um, this, some of this stuff might be uh, helpful because as we talk about time, we use some terms and terminology that sometimes can be a little bit confusing. Um, I often show this at the beginning of the year, or or actually more toward when we're talking about the Odyssey, but uh, due to time this year I didn't, uh, but we have a little time now so we can go over how we talk about time. This becomes relevant for the unit that we're in because we're talking about the Renaissance and that happened during a particular time period. We'll also be talking about how the Renaissance uh, relates to um, classical antiquity and that's another time period, so this can be really useful. So first let's talk about some basic terms. So of course you've heard the term BC um, when you're talking about dates. So you might hear the term 500 BC and that simply um, means before Christ. And that just denotes a time frame before that meant the year that many believe that Jesus Christ was born. Now, um, something about BC is that it's growing more common to hear people talk about BCE instead of BC. So BC instead of BCE, rather instead of BC. And BCE just means before common era. Now, um, there's a couple of reasons for this uh, change. Um, the, the, the first is that it is not completely clear when Jesus Christ was born. We have a rough idea. Um, we have a pretty clear idea, but we don't know exactly when he was born. So using the term BC becomes an inexact term. And so this, this term BCE, or before common era, has, is going to replace the term BC. The other reason is that there are many religions and societies that do not recognize the birth of Christ as a significant event. So it really doesn't make sense to use that event um, for those people. So we're developing this new terminology called before common era. Um, now you're going to see both terms used. I grew up where we called uh, this time frame BC, so you're going to hear that a lot from me, um, but you may also see before common era. So you can use these terms interchangeably. Both are considered acceptable. Now we also have the term AD, and uh, this comes from the Latin Anno Domini. Now that doesn't mean after death. A lot of people think that AD means after death, but it refers, um, actually refers to history from the time that Christ was thought to have been born until the current day. Um, and just like the term BC evolving into BCE, um, the term AD is evolving um, in that we're more often using the term CE, which means common era. Um, and of course, this term has evolved for the same reasons that the term BC has evolved. So if you see AD or, sorry, my cat's tail is going in front of the screen. If you see the term uh, AD, um, it means just the same as the term CE. And if you see the term BC, it means just the same as the term BCE. Again, these terms are interchangeable. All right, so um, we can think of these terms on a timeline. Now, once again, I'm going to be using these terms interchangeably. So, um, because lots of things that you see uh, have one term or another. Now, we're gonna think about these terms on a timeline. Let's go ahead and show the timeline. Okay, so from the year 1 CE, also called AD, the numbers get larger as history progresses. So they get larger along this line as history project progresses, and then um, it gets, the numbers get larger um, as you go the other way on BC. So as we go back in history, the numbers get larger. Now, it is important to know that unlike a standard mathematical timeline, there is no year zero. So this, um, the, the, the line here in the middle is 
not zero, it's year one. And we might think of that as the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, um, you should note that if a year does not have the BC or AD marker, or our other interchangeable terms, BCE or CE, then we just assume that the time era is AD or CE. So if you say 1976, and there's no marker on the end of it, we're simply assuming that that time era is AD or CE. Of course, common era. And you can see that here once again on the timeline. Now in this case, the timeline is showing, of course, BC and AD. You see uh, right there in the middle, once again, we've got year one. So how do we talk about time? Um, we like to think of it as a timeline. It's not exactly, but it's really close. And you can kind of um, do the math, so to speak, just like you would when you're talking about positive and negative numbers. All right, so sometimes um, what we'll see in referring to history, you're going to see the word circa, or some, sometimes it'll just be abbreviated as C, and you'll see this word or this abbreviation in front of dates. And circa, it just means approximately because, gosh, we don't always know exactly when things happened. So we have some good estimates uh, about things because we just didn't have, um, didn't keep as many records um, of things as we do now. For example, Shakespeare was born in circa 1564 CE. Now, if I had just said 1564 without the CE, you know what I would be talking about. Now here we see an engraving. This is done by was done by a guy named E. Scriven, and he uh, based it on a drawing by this guy named Ozens Humphrey. It's known as Chando's portrait, and it was done circa 1590. Now let's talk about centuries. Now this can be a little bit confusing um, for people who um, don't talk about different centuries a lot. So let's go over this. Again, this might be a review, but it's a good review. So once again, here's a little, hopefully a little review. A century is a period of time lasting 100 years. Now, um, when we refer to centuries, we are referring to the period leading up to the end of that century. For example, the 19th century refers to the 1800s leading up to the year 1900. And the year 1900 marks the beginning of the 20th century. So you kind of think of it in the same way that you think of your birthday. So think of a newborn. A newborn is born on in its first year of life, but the baby doesn't actually turn one year old until its first birthday. Similarly, I am in my 54th year of life, but I don't turn 54 until November. So it works the same way when we're talking about centuries. Right now, in the year 2020, we're near the beginning of the 21st century. So the 1400s mark the 15th century and so on. So when we're talking about 19th century British literature, for example, we would be talking about stuff that was written in the 1800s. Now, the 4th century would encompass the period of time from 300 until 399 CE. So when we hear these dates, we'll know a little bit better when we're talking about centuries versus years. All right, let's talk briefly about historical time periods. The reason we talk about this now is that we've got, we're talking about the Renaissance, which we'll get more information about, um, but we're also talking about what period of time did the Renaissance want to go back to? So here's some early European time periods. You guys don't need to take intensive notes on this. Um, these, this is just some information. So when you hear the, the term classical antiquity, that's a period of time from 700 BC through 680. So that's spanning that year one um, year on that timeline. Now that's a broad term for a very long period of culture history, centering on the Mediterranean Sea 
and um, comprising civilizations in ancient Greece and Rome, um, known as the Greco-Roman world. It is also considered the period in which Greek and Roman society flourished and wielded great influence throughout Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East. And this is the period we're going to find that the Renaissance is really looking to um, go back to, to revive some of the great things that were happening during that time frame. Now, ancient Greece, you can also think of this as Greece and the Near East. Now, uh, the Near East would be uh, places such as Turkey in Mesopotamian areas. Um, that time frame is circa 3,300 BC through 31 BC. This is a very long period of time, and you can see that it encompasses some of this time frame, some of classical antiquity. Um, now, it should be noted that there, this area did have settlements as far back as 9,000, but that's not included in this time frame. Then we also have ancient Rome, and that goes from 753 BC through 476 AD, again, spanning that year one on the, our timeline. So we've got some ancient civilizations here. So when our Renaissance um, artists and writers, uh, etc., were trying to go back in time. They were looking mostly at classical antiquity and ancient Rome um, as far as the, the time that they were run, wanting to um, have a rebirth of. All right. Let's talk about some ancient literature. Now, when we talked about stories of the people, we referred to the oldest known epic, which is the Epic of Gilgamesh. And you might recall I had mentioned that it contains a flood story very similar to the one found in the Old Testament. Now, the Epic of Gilgamesh dates to circa 2000 BCE. Wow, that's a long time ago. It was written in Sumerian cuneiform. Um, and we would call this period um, the period of ancient Greece. Now, Homer, our buddy, Homer, who wrote the Odyssey, lived sometime between 1200 and 800 BC. Again, this is a, a long period of time to make an estimate, but we're having to piece together limited information to figure out um, when he wrote. This is the period of ancient Greece. Now, he wrote in the larger period of classical antiquity. Now, oftentimes when people say, oh, it was the classical period, there's also a classical period of music. That is a different thing. Um, a classical mu a period of music would include uh, such composers as Beethoven. That's a, that's a different thing. So you're hearing classical antiquity. That's different from a, a classical period that we might refer to in music. Now, it's thought that the Old Testament of the Bible was written over a period of time spanning 800 through 100 BCE. So a very long period of time that it was written. It wasn't just jotted down by one guy or two guys or gals. Um, it was written by a number of people over a very long period of time. Now Plato, you might have heard of Plato. Um, he was a philosopher um, that many of um, the thinkers in the Renaissance uh, looked to for some ideas. He wrote in circa 400 BCE in the period of ancient Greece. He also wrote in the period of classical antiquity. Now we're going to be looking at an author named Ovid. He wrote the Metamorphosis in circa 8 CE in the period of ancient Rome. So remember that uh, in the Renaissance they were looking to the Greeks and the Romans to come up with um, some of their ideas about what culture should look like, what art should look like, etc. He wrote also in the period of classical antiquity. We're going to be looking at a, a piece by Ovid. Um, so the Metamorphosis is a, is a wonderful um, larger piece, but we're going to be looking at a piece in that um, that was a precursor to Romeo and Juliet, um, perhaps an inspiration to Romeo and Juliet, which makes sense since Renaissance writers were looking to the ancients for um, inspiration. Now, it's thought that the New Testament of the Bible was written over a period of time spanning 50 to 110 
CE, so after the birth of Christ. Oftentimes we think that uh, these individuals were writing about Christ during the time when, when he was actually alive, and this is not the case. The New Testament was written uh, by numerous people over this period of time. Let's look quickly at some European eras. Um, please don't write all these down. This is mostly just to put things in some contact. Um, now we're in context. So we're looking at some European eras. There are, there are many more, um, but note that many of these eras overlap. So we've got the Middle Ages, the early Middle Ages, the Viking Age, High Middle Ages, Late Middle Ages, the Renaissance, which is the time frame that we're talking about this week, the Age of Discovery. Again, see some overlap among these so that these are not distinct eras. The Elizabethan era. Again, this is a period of time um, that Shakespeare wrote. The Elizabethan era being within the Renaissance. The Jacobian era. The Age of Enlightenment. That's mostly the 18th century. The Georgian era. But again, there's some overlap here, you'll see. The Industrial Revolution. The Romantic era. The Victorian era. So that's mostly in the mid uh, to late 1800s and then going up until the 1900s. Now let's talk a little bit how we refer to things. So there's the Middle Ages. You can also refer to the Middle Ages as the medieval era. Okay, But um, when you talk about the Middle Ages, um, and literature within the Middle Ages. You call it medieval literature, not Middle Age literature. Now, that's just, um, that's just a, a practice because medieval in Latin means Middle Age. So medieval in this case, when we're talking about literature, is the adjective, while Middle Ages is the noun. So Geoffrey Chaucer, we're not going to talk about Geoffrey Chaucer in this class, but uh, he wrote the Canterbury Tales in circa 1347, and by the way, that's the 14th century. The Canterbury Tales was written in, written in the late Middle Ages and is considered medieval literature. Now, Shakespeare, he wrote Taming of the Shrew, that's one of his comedies, by the way, very famous comedy, between 1590 and 1592. His sonnets were written circa 1592 to 1598, and Romeo and Juliet, which is the piece that we're going to be looking at, was written between 1591 and 1596. And we can say that Shakespeare wrote in the Renaissance era and in the Elizabethan era. Now, these eras overlap. The Elizabethan era is just a smaller part of the Renaissance era. And we can say that the Renaissance is at the end of the Middle Ages. And you can even say the medieval era. So I'll give you some context. So I hope this has been helpful. I know it's not the most exciting stuff, but this kind of terminology can help us to understand um, when we're talking about literature, really when we're talking about anything historical, when things happen and um, gives just a better idea as to um, what people are talking about when they talk about different centuries or different eras or when they say um, things such as circa.